Okay, so this is question one from the uh, tutorial. We'll just go through it. It says they've got a load of 300, go to a pen, 300 kilonewtons here on a three meter by three meter square footing. Fairly simple. People had a few minor problems understanding some of this when it's really quite simple. Um, the average consolidation settlement beneath the footing, if you were to use the load spread method, of two vertical to one horizontal. And that's pretty straightforward too. It's just, you know, I'll draw the triangle here, but we'll do it as we go through. Two metres vertical to one metre horizontal. And that's the gradient that load spread line is at. I'll say a little bit more about that when we get to the that part of the question. Um, and it's got four layers, one, two, three, and four meters as shown below. This is that here, one, two, three, and four meters. Okay, so um, as we can see the the water table is at the surface here. It gives us all the parameters here we need. CC 0.12 E0 initial voids ratio of 0.89 and gamma saturated, the saturated bulk density of 16 kilonewtons per cubic meter. It also gives us up here the formula to calculate the consolidation and we'll go through that in a little bit more detail when it's time to use it. Okay, a lot, a few people had a problem understanding the geometry of this problem. And I think the easiest way to think of this thing is a bit like a truncated pyramid. There's a three by three meter square top and the stress distributes downwards at two vertical to one horizontal forming the pyramid. There's layers and over here on the right I've marked the depths to the midpoint of those layers. Okay so if we look at um, the equation up here we need to know sigma prime which is really just effective overburden pressure and change in sigma which is the increase in pressure from this load over a given area. That given area changes. So we could do this, uh, say sigma prime, effective overburden pressure, by calculating it at the surface and at a depth of one meter, adding them together, dividing by two to get the average effective overburden pressure for that layer it's a heck of a lot easier just to work on the midpoint of the layer which will give you the average of the two values we need. I know most of you know that but I did get a few blank stares and a few questions about this um, in the tutorial so I thought I'd just explain it a bit further. Okay the other thing I got a few blank stares about was this dimension x1, x2, x3 etc. Um, I'm just looking at layer 1 here and I've marked XX on it, that's this dimension X1. What's going on? This 3 metre by 3 metre footing has this load on it and that is distributed downwards at, an ang at a gradient of 2 in 1 over here. So at, at two meters deep it's going to be one meter wider than it is at the surface and then we had this um, a couple of people couldn't grab what was going on here because we're working in averages in the midpoint of the layer okay we were doing something like this we we're drawing a couple of triangles two is to one equals 0 0.5 is to a so all we're doing is taking this 2 to 1 gradient and working out how far the load has spread 
in 0.5 meters here. So A equals 0.5 on 2, which equals 0.25 meters. And that 0.25 meters is only on one side. There's another one on the other side, exactly the same. So dimension X, and we'll call it X1 in this case, like we do when we get into solving the problem, equals 3 meters, the original size of the footing, plus 2 times 0 0.25 equals 3.5 meters. And that just means that this square footing at the top, 3.3 meters, has spread to a size of 3.5 by 3.5 meters by the time it gets down half a meter. Okay, so we've calculated x1, which is the size of the square, the side of the square at a depth of 0.5 of a metre at a 2 vertical to 1 horizontal gradient dissipation rate. And that's just 3.5 metres at the top. Now we can calculate the other parts that we need for the, um, the consolidation uh, equation pro provided. And the first one is sigma prime. So sigma prime is just effective overburden stress. And in our case, it's 16 kilonewtons per cubic metre provided, minus 10 for the water, times 0.5, which equals 3 kilopascals. The other thing we need to calculate for the equation is delta sigma. And that's the increase in pressure at a depth of 0.5 of a metre using this 3.5 metre square side, length of the side of the square at that depth. And that's essentially 300 kilonewtons the load on 3.5 by 3.5. Just force on area equals 24.49 kilopascals. So once we've got those, we can then go ahead and using, come back up to the top here, oh, it's on the other page, sorry, but that um, consolidation equation that was given to you, here I'll write it out to make it a bit easier. So the, the consolidation DC, I'll call it N for any layer, um, equals HCC1 plus E naught times the log of sigma prime plus delta sigma on sigma prime. And that's going to give you the con consolidation for any individual layer. And at the end, we'll have four layers with this calculated and we'll just add them up to get the total consolidation. If you hear any noise in the background, it's the dishwasher going. But I've got to get this finished, sorry. Um, so let's work out consolidation for layer 1 equals H, which is the layer thickness, 1 metre, times CC provided, 0 0.12, divided by 1 plus 0 0.89 E naught provided, times the log of what we just calculated, sigma sigma prime and delta sigma. So it's the log of sigma prime which is 3 plus 24.49 divided by 3. We go through and calculate that and we get 0 0.0611 meters. So that's the degree of consolidation, the amount of consolidation that's going to occur in that first one meter layer from the three kilonewton, uh, whatever it was, 300 kilonewton load. All right, and we just repeat that now for each of the other layers. Okay, so everything I said before applies for these next three layers. We're going to work at the center of the layer, and um, you were provided with the dimensions to that. So I've just jumped ahead here and drawn the triangles. Two into one. For the second layer, we've got, it's a two meter layer, just draw it here. 
one meter, two meters, and we're going to work on the center of the layer there from the surface is two meters. Hopefully you understand that. Equals two on A goes to A equals two on two equals one. So it's a it's um Uh, that that a factor is is one. Sorry, lost the train of thought there. Um, a is one, which is how much wider the square is on each side. So x two. It's um, x two. The pen would work. Equals three meters at the surface, plus two times one twice on each side, which equals five metres. So the square that the load is distributed on is five metres square. Kick ahead, everything's exactly the same. Sigma prime equals 16 minus 10 times two metres. It's a two metre thickness down to the centre of the layer. Equals 12 kPa. Delta sigma equals 300 on this new size of area 5 meters by 5 meters equals 12 kPa just to make it nice and easy um, the consolidation for this layer DC2 equals H which is 2 meters thick times 0 0.12 cc provided divided by 1 plus 0 0.89 E0 provided times the log of 12 plus 12 on 2 12 sorry because they both work out to 12 kilopascals calculate that out and we get 0 0.0382 meters that's layer 2 Let's do layer three. Kick it on. Two is to one equals four point five. Depth to the center of the layer is um, on A. Layer three goes to A equals four point five on two, which equals um, 2.25 x3 the size that the load spread over at the center of the third layer equals 3 plus 2.25 times 2 for each side of the triangles both sides of the, the footing spread equals 7.5 okay now that we've done that calculated the size of the square the area of this of the load distribution we can do sigma prime equals 16 minus 10 times 4.5 the depth of the center of the layer equals 27 kilopascals and delta sigma the increase in stress from that load equals 300 the load divided by 7.5 by 7.5 the size of the square of the midpoint of the layer which equals 5.3 kPa okay so we can now calculate the consolidation for layer 3 which equals the layer thickness H times 0.12 cc property of the soils provided 1.089 E0 times the log of 27 plus 5.33 divided by 27 and that equals 0 0.0149 meters that's layer 3 consolidation and now we'll start on layer 4 gives us a 2 to 1 triangle equals something is to A and 
it's eight meters. That's the depth of the center of that last layer. A equals eight on two equals four meters. So the, the square that the pressure is distributed on increases four meters on each side compared to the surface. So X4, the length of the side of the square is three meters for the initial footing plus four by two, four meters by two, which equals 11 meters. Sig sigma prime equals 16 minus 10 times eight equals 48 kPa. And the change in pressure equals 300 divided by 11 by 11 equals 2.479 kPa. We can now calculate the consolidation delta C4 equals 4 meters layer thickness by 0 0.12 1 plus 0 0.89 all the same except for that 4 meters times the log log not the tail of um, um, 48 plus 2.479 divided by 48 all the same as the previous layers equals 0 0.0055 meters so that gives us the degree of consolidation of each of the four layers total consolidation total consolidation equals just the sum of all those 0 0.0611 layer 1 plus 0 0.0 382 layer 2 plus 0 0.0149 plus 0 0.0055 meters. Add all those up and it equals 0 0.11975 meters, which is close enough to 120 millimeters. And that's the answer to the first question. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've drawn the problem in question two. And just to highlight everything important, we'll go to red. Um, it's a five metre square footing and it has a thousand kilonewton load on it. The depth of the clay layer is 10 metres, underlined by bedrock. And we have these um, parameters Elastic parameters, Poisson's ratio is 0.5. Um, the modulus, Youngmus modulus, is 30,000 kilonewtons per square metre. And the effective values, Poisson's ratio prime, new prime, is 0.3. And E prime is 26,000 kilonewtons per square metre. Um, so what we've got to do, this is a square footing. And if you remember those um, boost and S charts, we need to approximate a circle. So we know that this, the footing is five meters by five meters equals pi d squared on four. Here's the d, the diameter of the circular footing. The equivalent circular footing is 5.642 meters. Then the radius which is what we need for the charts, A equals obviously 5.642 on 2, which equals 2.821 metres. Okay, which brings us to this chart. You were introduced to these in the lectures. Um, only elastic theory stuff, but um, the beauty of the charts is they give you a lot of information. Up here in the top left hand corner, it defines the problem. H, the layer thickness, um, the pressure at the underside of footing, and 2A. A is the radius 
And if you remember, we just calculated that up the top previously. And they also give you the formula you need to use, which is down the bottom right hand corner here. Settlement equals P average times the radius on the modulus or multiplied by this influence factor that we're going to establish. Okay, to use the chart, we need H on A or A on H. And as I said in the lecture, um, that has to be less than one. That will tell you which one to use, H on A or A on H. And in our case, A on H equals 2.821 divided by 10 meters, the layer thickness equals 0 0.2821. We know that Poisson's ratio total is 0 0.5 and the modulus is 30,000. We can go ahead and solve this problem. Okay, so I've gone ahead and drawn these lines in on the chart. The red vertical line, this one, about 0.2821 comes up to the Poisson's ratio of 0 0.5 and across to the IP value which roughly gives us an IP value of 0 0.85 and with that we can go ahead and calculate the elastic settlement in the undrained condition. Right, the other thing we're going to need to solve the problem is to calculate this P average value. So P average is just the pressure at the underside of the footing which equals P on uh, pi A squared which equals 1000 kilonewtons divided by pi times 2.821 squared which equals 40 kilonewtons per square metre conveniently. So, so with those values, we can now go ahead and calculate the elastic settlement. So this is the undrained condition, elastic settlement, S, equals P average times A on E times IP, which equals 40 by 2.821 divided by E, the undrained modulus, 30,000 kPa, kilonewtons per square metre, times IP, which we calculated, or read off the chart, as 0.85, calculates down to 3.2 by 10 to the minus 3 metres, or 3.2 millimetres. So that is the undrained, total undrained settlement uh, for this problem. Now we can move on to the drain condition. Alright, the drain condition is much the same. Um, we've got a new uh, new value, new prime, the um, effective Poisson's ratio. And um, that affects obviously the, the uh, IP value. So let's go ahead. We know P average, we calculated that, equals 40 kPa. We know A on H equals 0 0.2821. New prime equals 0 0.3. And modulus prime equals 26,000 kilonewtons per square metre. So for this new Poisson's ratio, we come back up to the chart. I've already done it. We read off the same 0.2821. Poisson's ratio is 0.3, so it's halfway between 0.2 and 0.4. Take them across, and that's halfway to between between 1 here and 1.2. So that goes to our IP value. Come back down here. IP equals 1.1. Um, settlement drained equals... P average, exactly the same, A on E, 
times IP, which equals 40, times 2.821 on 26,000, the new E value, times 1.1. And that calculates down to 4.77 millimetres. And that's settlement in the drain condition, so that's total settlement. So consolidation settlement is the difference between the two. Well, it's just consolidation. 4.77 is total settlement, so that includes the immediate initial settlement done in the undrain condition and the consolidation settlement. So by subtracting 4.77, 3.25, so this is the initial undrain settlement and this is the final total settlement. Subtracting the two will leave us with 1.57 millimetres, which is the actual consolidation settlement. I hope that's clear. Okay, the second part of the question asks is for that same problem we just did. Um, how much consolidation settlement will occur two years after loading. Remember there's two T's that we use in this, capital T and small t. Small t is real time. So small t is two years, capital T is dimensionless time, and it's used in the calculation. Capital T equals CV small t on H squared. We'll given CV at 0.6 times Two, two years, the question asks with the settlement at two years, divided by h squared, which is 10 squared, goes to capital T, dimensionless time, equals 0 0.01, sorry, 1, 2. Right, now we've got to refer to our um, T and U chart which I'll just paste in here now. Okay, so we just calculated T at 0 0.012 and by reference to this graph above, this time the right graph, um, we see that we also need H on A and in our case, it's specified this time. There's no decision about whether you're using A on H or H on A. In our case, that equals 10 divided by 2.821 which equals 3.54 okay so we calculated T at 0.012 here we calculated H on A as 3.54 0 0.012 on the x-axis take it up it's roughly halfway between 2 and 5 these values here take it across and that gives us a U value or percentage consolidation at 0 0.18 and I've written that in here U equals 0 0.18 so after two years we need to calculate the settlement and the total is equals the elastic plus U times the consolidation The elastic and the consolidation we calculated before is 3.2 plus, or 3.20, let's put that on there so we've got the same number of digits, plus 0.18 U we've just calculated times the consolidation 1.57 which we calculated before and that all calculates down to 3.48 millimetres. So after two years, there will be 3.48 millimetre settlement consisting of 3.2 mil of elastic settlement and the remainder in consolidation settlement, which is 18% of the consolidation. And that's the answer to the second part.